symbolic and the real viruses are carried again as invincible, true and proper demons capable of penetrating into us and pulling us down into its void of meaning. From then on, the immunitarian demand grows exponentially until it becomes our fundamental measure, the very form that we give to our lives. It is here, nevertheless, that my second thesis is graphic, which is the idea that immunity, which is necessary for protecting our lives, if carried past a certain threshold, winds up neg negating life. This in the sense that immunity forces life into a sort of cage or armoring in which not only our freedom is lost, but also the very meaning of our individual and collective existence, which is to say that circulation, or meaning that I define by the term community. Here lies the terrible contradiction on which we should focus. What saves individual and collective life is also that which impedes life's development and indeed what, beyond a certain point, winds up destroying individual and collective life. We could say, in the language of Walter Benjamin, himself that because of the closing of a border, that immunization at high doses is the sacrifice of the living, which is to say of every form of qualified life to simple survival, the reduction of life to its bare biological layer of bios to zoe, to remain as such life is forced to give way to an outside power that penetrates and crushes life, to incorporate that nothing that life wishes to avoid, remaining captured by its void of meaning. On the other side, this contradiction, this antinomical connection between protection and negation of life, is implicit in the very same procedures of medical immunization. As we know, to vaccinate a patient against a disease, one introduces into the organism a controlled and sustainable portion of this disease. In this case, the medicine consists of the same poison that the organism must protect itself from such that in order to keep someone alive, one must be given a taste of death. Necropolitics or necroeconomics, like the professor says. It is as if modern immunitary process intensified this contradiction to the extreme. The cure is always given in the form of a lethal poison. If this immunological practice is related to the working of a social body, the same antinomy, the same counterfactual paradox is registered. To raise continually the threshold of attention of society vis-à-vis -vis the risk, which is what we have grown accustomed for some time now, means blocking the growth of even running backwards to work on earlier stage, rather than adjusting the level of protection to the effect of the nature of the risk, it is as if what is adjusted is the perception of the risk to the growing demand for protection, which is to say risk is artificially created in order to control protection as insurance companies routinely do. All of this is part of modern experience, but my impression is that we have touched a point, a limit, at which the mechanism of a reciprocal threatening between risk and insurance, between protection and neg negation of life, really risks getting out of hand. 
in order to see what I mean, consider what happens in so-called autoimmune disease when the immunitary system is so powerful that the system turns against itself against the same mechanism that should defend it and so don't destroy that system. Certainly, immunitary systems are necessary. No individual or social body can do without them, but when they grow without a limit, they wind up pushing the entire organism towards explosion or implosion. This is exactly the trend that took place after the tragic events of September 11, because the war of terrorism and against terrorism is doubly linked with the immunity paradigm. That war is both the aggravated form of the immunity paradigm and it's moving beyond control, the tragic epilogue of what we can call this immunitarian crisis. In the same sense, the Buddha, René Girard uses the expression of sacrificial crisis, when the logic of sacrifice swept past the banks that circumscribe the sacrificial victim, pushing the entire society towards violence as a result. It is then that blood spouts out everywhere and that man literally are torn to pieces. This world appears as originating in the combined pressure of two contrasting and mirror-like immunitarian obsessions, that of Islamic fundamentalism determined to protect the dead, its unpresumed religious, ethnic, and cultural purity from contamination by the Western civilization, and that of a West set on excluding the rest of the planet from sharing its own excessive amount of goods. When these two conflicting impulses are brought together without any way of separating them, the entire world is shaken by convulsion that has the characteristic of the most devastating kind of autoimmune disease, an excess of defense with respect to the elements outside the organism is directed toward the organism itself with potentially lethal effects. What exploded along with the Twin Towers was the double system of immunity that until then had held the world together. Let's not lose again the fact that this tragic event took place completely within the triangle of monotheism, Christianity, Judaism and Islam, with its real and symbolic epicenter at Jerusalem. Everything happened there, everything was unleashed there, within the deadly circle of monotheism, and not within Buddhism or within Hinduism. Why? I would hazard that these civilizations, Islamic, Christian, and Jewish, are in conflict not because they oppose each other, but on the contrary, in as much as they are too alive, too tired to each other in their constitutive categories, in their logic of the one, in their syndrome of monotheism, that in the East this takes on the figure of the one God and in the West of our true God, money, as the absolute value, doesn't detract from the fact that the logic of a boat is subjected to the same principle of unity, that the boat wants to unify the world on the basis of their point of view. This is what I would define as the metaphysical stakes of this world ahead of oil, territory and bonds. What paradoxically is at stake in the question is the question of the truth 